Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to look at three problems from chapter 18, problems 17, 18, and 26. So in problem 17, we are asked to calculate the root mean square speed of a nitrogen molecule at 0 degrees Celsius, and then to determine how many times per second it will move back and forth across a 5 meter long room on the average, assuming it made very few collisions with the other molecules. All right, so we are going to assume that it just moves on a straight line until it actually uh, hits one of the walls of our room. And we'll just completely neglect the uh, collisions with the other molecules. So this is uh, problem 17. All right, so we have nitrogen molecule. Now, this is a straightforward application of uh, one of the results of kinetic theory. So I have average V square is going to be equal to 3 halves kT. Now, at this point, uh, as many of you uh, must have read uh, chapter, uh, the further chapters, and in one of them there is the equipartition of energy, and you might be wondering that, so this is a nitrogen molecule, so it's a diatomic molecule, it's not a monatomic ideal gas, it looks something like this, so it has additional degrees of freedom. Now, when we have additional degrees of freedom, do we actually uh, have a different number here? So th these uh, are, are just, uh, this looks like three times uh, a half kT, and this is because we have three uh, translational degrees of freedom, but nitrogen molecule is going to have rotational degrees of freedom as well, right, two of them. And so do we, are we supposed to take those into account? The answer is no, right? You don't take those into account uh, because if you just go back uh, and look at the derivation of this result, it doesn't have anything to do with the internal degrees of freedom of the gas. It assumes the ideal gas law, right? So you need this uh, result uh, to, to get the, uh, uh, so it's an approximation. But apart from the ideal gas law, it doesn't say anything about whether it's a monatomic gas or diatomic gas or something more complicated, right? So this holds for all ideal gases, and only for ideal gases, obviously. But once you uh, do this, uh, so our root mean square, the RMS, is going to be just uh, to, to have cancel, m moves to denominator, and then I just get the square root. So this is 3 kT divided by m to a half. This will be my root mean square speed. And I actually plug the numbers in, and when you do this, uh, you get something like 461 meters per second. I mean, my, my numbers might be off, but uh, this is just a very straightforward application uh, of this formula. The only tricky thing is that if you know too much, you might just uh, think that the rotational degrees of freedom should be five. It should not be. It should be just three halves. Right? It's just the translational degree of freedom that enters our kinetic theory. Right? And so this is three, Boltzmann constant. The temperature is at zero degrees Celsius, so it should be 273. Kelvins, and this is the molecular weight of the nitrogen. Uh, I think that's about 32 grams divided by Avogadro's number, something like that. Right. Okay, so this was part A. And for part B, uh, what they're asking is, I think, how long it takes uh, for, let me just make sure, I determine how many times per second it will move back and forth uh, across a five meter long room on the average, assuming it made very few collisions with the other molecules. So they're asking for uh, frequency. Uh, I think it's easier to calculate the period. So the period, uh, the time between two collisions with a given wall is just going to be uh, the length of the wall times two because you go back and forth uh, divided by your speed. But this should be just one component of the speed because you are in some room. And let's say that you're looking at how many times you hit this. So uh, the only the component of your velocity that's perpendicular to that wall is going to matter. Right? So let's say this is x component of our velocity. And we need to find this vx in terms of this vrms. Uh, but uh, we can make the assumption of isotropy that x direction is not special. It's the same as uh, y and z directions. So under assumption, we have vx square equals vy square equals vz square. But at the same time, vx square plus vy square plus vz square is just vrms square, right, by definition. But this is simply 3 vx squared. And so uh, this is going to be 2L divided by vrms divided by square root of 3. Okay. Uh, so this is the period. Uh, they are asking for the frequency. So frequency is just going to be the reciprocal of the period. So that's going to be V RMS by 2 square root of 3 times L. 
and L is given, it is five meters, and you just need to plug the numbers in, and I think I did this as well, and uh, what you get is 26.6. Uh, suppose that this is in hertz. Right. So every second, 26.6 uh, .6 times the molecule is going to hit one of the walls. All right. So as you see, this is a quite straightforward application uh, of one of the basic results of kinetic theory. And uh, this is actually sort of uh, a warm-up for the next problem. So problem 18, we are asked to estimate how many air molecules rebound from a wall in a typical room per second, assuming an ideal gas of n molecules contained in a cubic room with size of length L, a temperature T, and pressure P. And then we are asked to show that uh, some formula holds, and uh, then again show that this equation can be written as some approximation. Then we are required to uh, put, in, uh, put in some numbers and get a numerical answer for a particular case. All right. So we are asked again the frequency first. Let me just raise this. Um, Eighteen. So again, we are asked the frequency, so that's going to be just uh, 1 over the period. And we have already established that the period uh, in such cases is going to be just twice the length of the wall divided by uh, one of the components of, of our velocity. Right? And uh, but we are here. So this is just for a single molecule. Right? So this is, uh, so the frequency is going to be Vx by 2L, this is for a single molecule. No. Molecule. So the way the question is worded, uh, they're asking their capital M molecules contain a cubic room. The frequency F which gas molecules, right? Not a single molecule, but the gas molecules strike a wall. So to get the overall frequency, we are going to have N times this number. X by 2L for all molecules. Obviously, the larger the number of molecules, uh, the higher the frequency uh, by which you're going to strike the wall. Right? Now, but we can write this. Uh, we can write an expression for n using the ideal gas law. So PV, so by the way, this is period, so I should just write period. PV equals uh, n kt. So n is equal to PV by kt. So my frequency becomes PV uh, Vx. I should just write maybe Vx average here uh, by kt uh, 2L. But uh, we're in a cubic room with sides L, so uh, V is just L cube. So this is L cube. So this is going to become P L square uh, Vx average divided by kt. Let's put here 2L. And uh, sorry, L cube. cube, and these cancel, so just say this here, this way, and you get the expression that you're after. This is what they were asking for, P times the average component of the velocities uh, divided by uh, 2kt. Okay. Now, uh, then they're asking to make an approximation. Now, why is this an approximation? Why is this not exact? Uh, because uh, we're, we're, we're going to have to assume uh, to relate this to to relate this to temperature uh, and make the cancellation that we are about to do, uh, we need to make an assumption that this is an ideal gas. But we already made this assumption, right? So actually, this is an approximation as well. I don't know why uh, they give the impression that this is exact and the other one is approximation. The only further approximation we are going to make is still the ideal gas law. But uh, we are going to use the result of the kinetic theory that we already established. So uh, Vx bar is VRMS divided by square root of 3 and VRMS uh, square half was just 3 halves kT. Right, this is our result. So these uh, just go away. And if I take the square root of both sides, VRMS divided by square root of 3 is just going to be kT by m uh, square root. Right. So Vx average is kT by 
m square root. Okay, and if I substitute this in here, just put this value in here, uh, this becomes p uh, times kt to the half uh, l square times 2 kt uh, m to the half, uh, and there is nothing else. Uh, so the square root of kt is going to cancel uh, part of this kt. This is going to become square root of kt itself. To put everything in square root, I just square this. So what I get is p l square by 4 kt m to a half. Right? So by using this result from kinetic theory, we show that the frequency can be written in the form that's given uh, in the book. Right? So as I said, I don't know why uh, uh, the, the, there is no approximation sign up there, but there is one down here. Uh, but yeah, this is my take on this. Okay. So the next problem actually does not require a whiteboard, but we are going to be using this uh, diagram here. So I will be using my cursor, which hopefully gets recorded. So here you have a sample of water and are able to control temperature and pressure arbitrarily. Using figure 5, which I reproduced here, describe the phase changes you will see if you start the temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, the pressure of 180 atmospheres, and decrease the pressure down to 0 0.04 atmosphere while keeping the temperature fixed. Oh, by the way, uh, for the previous problem, there is a part C. Uh, assume a cubic error. This is just substitution of numbers in. Uh, I'm not going to do this. So, yeah. And then repeat part A with the temperature at 0 degrees Celsius. OK, so first we have 85 degrees Celsius, so somewhere below. This is not linear scale, uh, but this is uh, 85 degrees, let's say, corresponds to somewhere here. Uh, and we have a pressure of 180 atmosphere, so somewhere between 1 and two, uh, 218. So we start in the liquid phase. right? And we decrease the pressure down to 0 0.04 atmosphere. So this is 0 0.006. Uh, 0 0.004 is going to be below that. So we start from here, We just uh, as we decrease uh, the pressure, uh, we go from the liquid to vapor phase. Right? Get some evaporation, and we end up at the vapor phase. And then we are asked to repeat part A with temperature at 0 degrees Celsius. So 0 degrees Celsius is here. And I start at a pressure of 180 atmospheres, somewhere up here, below 218 line. So this is above 1. So I again start in the liquid phase. And as I decrease this, so it's not very clear whether I actually reach the gas phase here, but I think it's reasonable to assume that I do. Um, so I start somewhere in the liquid phase, I decrease the pressure from 108 atmosphere, and I hit one atmosphere, my liquid is going to solidify. I'll get ice. Right? So this is the unusual behavior of water. Normally, uh, materials just uh, solidify as you increase the pressure. Uh, water has this opposite behavior. It solidifies. Uh, it liquefies when you increase the pressure, and conversely, it solidifies when we decrease it. Uh, so it solidifies at one atmosphere, and then it's going to be a solid for a while. And if we actually go this below this solid vapor uh, line, I, I, I don't know where 0 0.04, uh, 0 0.004 uh, atmospheres lie, but if it lies below this, then we are going to get a vaporization. So this, this will be just sublimation. The solid will turn into its vapor. Uh, otherwise, we are just going to stay in the solid phase. Right? And we have this uh, assumption that you held the system at starting conditions long enough for the system to stabilize before making further changes. Uh, this is just to establish the vapor pressure and things like that. Uh, there's, uh, it's just you are assuming thermal equilibrium, that all the equilibrium has established. Okay. All right, that's all I want to say. Thank you.